one. It includes uh, eight, uh, seven eighty-seven. I think it's only one. Yeah, it's only one bill, Mr. Chairman. Would you go forward? Is that with uh, seven eighty-seven? Is that okay with you, sir? Yes, sir. Yes. Go ahead and make your. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and ladies and gentlemen of the committee. Uh, Senate Bill seven eighty-seven is a bill that. Um, has to do with the governor's schools, and actually has to do with one governor's school, <laughs> the way it's drafted, um, which is Thomas Jefferson School for Science and Technology. And um, I have some statistics I'm going to hand out here for you. But uh, TJ, that's what we call it in Northern Virginia. TJ was opened in 1985 when I was in eighth grade. I was in actually the very first class that was offered admission to the school. And um, it's a very different school today than when it was originally, from what it was uh, originally envisioned. It's, um, for those of you who don't know, it's a school that focuses on science and technology. They admit students from not just Fairfax County, but many, um, but from Arlington, Alexandria, um, Prince William, and Loudoun, although Loudoun is creating their own science and tech-focused school to get out of TJ. Um, and they also admit a lot of private school kids. And you'll see the, the chart I'm handing out. What I basically did was I took the, the admission data for the class of 2007, which shows the number of applicants, the number of semifinalists, the number admitted, then I have the acceptance rate, and then I have the free reduced lunch meals percentage of the middle schools for which those kids came from. Um, basically, the, the school has had excellent results in terms of academics. I mean, they have a lot of national merit finalists, semifinalists, things like that. They win lots of awards. If you look at, at the performance, it's one of the best performing schools in the country. But the reality is, is the school doesn't even come close to reflecting the reality of people within the county that it, that it purports to draw students from. So where Fairfax County's school population is, has 30%, one in three kids is free reduced, has free and reduced meals, Thomas Jefferson, the student population is 2%. If you look at these admission statistics, and you can see why. If you attend a school that has 15% or less free reduced lunch meals as your population in middle school, you got a one in three chance of getting in. If you attend a school that, in my part of the county, you got about a one in 10 to a one in 20 shot of getting in. Or in the city of Fairfax, by the way, which didn't admit a single kid in the class of 2020. So there's something going on within our school system in Fairfax County where certain children aren't being encouraged or, or educated in a way that enables them to get in. And this has been um, a Fairfax County School Board member five years ago, and then Fairfax County NAACP filed a civil rights complaint against the school because, because it's, it's patently wrong. And since then, nothing's happened. And there's been many of us complaining about it, and nothing's happened. And given that my school board seems completely incapable of dealing with the problem, I figured it was time for the legislature to do something about it. So, I mean, this is a governor's school. This is a system we set up. It's a system we create. There's only so many governor's schools in the state. But if this is what our governor's schools are going to be, if they're going to be, you know, if they're going to be private academies, taxpayer-funded private academies for rich kids, then I don't think that's a program that we ought to be authorizing. And so, basically what this bill says is that if you're going to have a governor's school like this, the free reduced lunch meals population of the student population has to be 50% of the weighted average of all the schools that go in, which would be about 15%. And it puts an admissions cap on the schools at 15 and says they have to admit five from every middle school they pull from. And that would give it a more balanced system that looks a lot more like the county, and it would, it would, it would, it would be, I think, a lot fairer. And so um, that's, why, that's why I put the bill in, and I hope the committee would act favorably on it. I think there's a, one former, there's a former uh, counselor from Rachel Carson, which if you look at this list, admits, admitted 98 kids. In, in, in the class of 2020, whereas the middle schools in my part of the county either got zero or zero to five. And, and she can talk about a little bit about what happens and what she saw at the school she, she goes to, and right. she taught, used to teach at. Senator Serville, you do a great job presenting okay. your bill. Uh, Senator yeah. Saslow. Mr. Yeah. Chair. Um, uh, Senator Serville, my, you, you made, the, made the remark that this is a school for rich kids. Uh, this... Uh, School draws from uh, Alexandria. No, it does not draw from Alexandria. Arlington, Fairfax, Prince William, and Loudoun. Right. Okay. That that region that I just named has approximately twelve percent uh, Asian population. Yet they're close to seventy percent of the school. 
okay? Yeah. Not wealthy people, but what they do do is they have a substantial amount of uh, programs set up for these children uh, for extra, you know, to, to get them ready to take that test, which yep. is probably 80 to 90 percent. This school has been based strictly, strictly on merit only. Yep. And has never changed. They've had, they started, their first class was in 89. Since then, they've had eight Rhodes Scholars. They have research labs that, are, that some of the colleges in this state would be the envy of. And it's been strictly merit-based. And so help me, I, I see absolutely no reason to change that. It is not based on wealth. It is based on preparation. And if in, it, it, I have no problem trying to change curriculum in Fairfax or wherever uh, to, you know, boost, you know, the, the learning of these children or give them the topics that are necessary, but to simply lay down a blanket requirement uh, that they have to take 50% of the people uh, who are on, what, free and reduced law? That's not what it says. It's 50% of the weighted average, so it would be about 15% would have yeah. to be free and reduced law. Well, I, you know, I just can't see taking a school that has just excelled, and, and U.S. News and World Report has called the from time to time, the top high school in America, and changing it because you can't get kids in from Route 1. All right, guys. Uh, mm -hmm. Senator Mr. Locke. Chairman. Oh. I'm sorry. And then I'll... the school system's here. I'm sure they have a problem with it. They're here as well. They're <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I have, um, how is it determined um, who is admitted to the school? Who, who makes that determination? There's a, there's a test they have to take. They have to get recommendations from their teachers. And I don't think there's an interview, but there's a, it's mainly a test. It's the test. Not record. Oh, it's an essay, too. Okay. And an essay. Senator Locke. Okay, and what is the percentage of, um, what's the breakdown of, in terms of, um, of students over time um, who have been admitted to this school in terms of, of, um, of who's actually been admitted to the school? Where are they coming from? This this um, this chart I gave you sorts it by middle school, mm -hmm. right. and um, Rachel Carson is uh, sort of the Great Falls area, Longfellow's Falls Church. Um, these are mainly schools in the wealthier parts of Fairfax County. The eastern part of Fairfax County, which I represent, everything east of I-95, didn't have one national merit semifinalist last year out of six or seven high schools. I don't think the kids in my part of the county are any dumber than the kids in the rest of the county, but... Apparently, they just can't get into TJ. Okay. One final Senator question. Lock. Yes, ma'am. Uh, why did the NAACP find it necessary? To file NAACP a filed a complaint because African American and Hispanic Latino children can't get in. Latino kids make up 25% of Fairfax County's overall student population. Black children make up 10% of Fairfax County's student population. At TJ, TJ is 2% Hispanic and 1.5% black. And the NAACP is tired of those results and thinks they're discriminatory. That's why they filed their complaint. Mr. Okay. Chair. Uh, next up is uh, Senator Cosgrove. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I was uh, privileged to chair a two-year STEM study group. We actually visited Thomas Jefferson. Uh, it is absolutely an amazing facility. Um, that takes the best and the brightest of students. I mean, kids start working to get into Thomas Jefferson in middle school. They work so hard to get there. And I think that if we start fiddling around with, with the admissions policy for Thomas Jefferson, we're going to make it a weaker school. Not that any children are, are better or less than others, but these are kids that have worked for many, many years to to work to have admission into one of the finest high schools in the entire country. So, Mr. Chairman, I think it's a terrible idea to, to mess with something that's working so well. It is, is working so well. And when we talk about workforce development, and we need engineers, we need mathematicians, we need chemists, we need physicists, a lot of them are coming from Thomas Jefferson. Okay. And so, I, you know, it's not often that uh, Senator Sasslaw and I are, are, 
aligned together, but I'm arm in arm with him on this one. I think we just need to leave this alone. Right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Senator Howe. Well, uh, let's make it a really odd trio <laughs> because I agree with Senator Cosgrove. We have one of the best um, high schools in the country. Uh, it could use some improvement on some of the admissions, but it's based on merit. Um, and I don't think we down here have any business meddling with the decisions of the Fairfax County School Board on this issue. Um, typically, we leave these to the local uh, school boards, and I think when they have such a success, there's no reason for us to do anything that might um, deter from that. And basically, quotas are really... Uh, politically charged topic, and I don't think we should be going there. Okay. Senator Peek. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this goes against absolutely everything that we want as a state level to start telling local school boards the percentages of students that they're going to have at the school. It is an elected school board, isn't it? Yes. And in and it's run by the Fairfax, Mr. Chairman, run by the Fairfax County School Board? Yes. Okay. Y nothing further. Mr. Chair. All right. Very good. Mr. Um, Chair. Yes, Senator Peterson. And I just want to, first of all, I appreciate your shining a light on Lanier Middle School, which has three alumni in the state Senate, I might add, <laughs> uh, which I think is unprecedented. One of the issues, Scott, is that uh, kids that come up through Fairfax County Public Schools often get steered into advanced uh, studies program at certain middle schools. Right. And so that's why certain middle schools are going to have, you know, 60, 70, 80 kids. It doesn't need necessarily that the other middle schools are, are failing. It's just the best and the brightest kids get steered into the top middle schools through these AAP programs. We fought to get one into Lanier Middle School, and we finally did this year. So that's a separate issue. From this, um, I, one of the issues is, and, and well, I, I'll, I'll avoid, avoid sort of all the racial politics, but there's also a lot of intermarriage in Fairfax County, and you're going to try and start classifying people based on race and limiting if they can get in or not get into school. You're going to go down a whole different path. This, well, my bill didn't say anything about race. All right, but, so but that's guys, kind um, of subtext. Senator, uh, uh, <clears throat> thank you very much. And I have one witness too. At and some point. so what we're going to do is we're going to get uh, uh, about a maybe a couple of presentations real quickly, or, and I'm going to put a clock of yep. three minutes on it, but we're going to take less than that. Um, those that are here to speak in favor, welcome, ma'am. Thank you for traveling down to see us. Good morning. I'm Patricia Heining. I'm a retired teacher. I taught for 30 years in Fairfax County, and the last seven I was at Rachel Carson Middle School. And what I would like you to understand is Carson is a great school, but just because the kids achieve well, that doesn't mean it's a better school than another school. It's partly what you're given. I also spent eight years of my career at Annandale High School, one of the schools that has a lot of students with challenges. I watched kids given an opportunity who didn't have support at home earn a full IB diploma because people chose to lift them up. What you need to know about Carson is there is a pipeline. Carson is not helping these kids get in and what's happening is the parents have figured out the formula. Certain communities make sure that their kids starting early on get into every competition you can get in. They are ravenous about there's a math test my kid can take, he's going to take it. The parents started a debate team at Rachel Carson. They hold auditions for it. They run the uh, the debate team because they want the kids to win and have something to put on their little resume. Many of the activities, science, Olympiad, math counts, etc., they're limited to 30 kids. I've watched 200 kids stand in the hall lined up to audition for science Olympiad, but only 30 kids could get in. The parents have paid for extra classes, John Hopkins programs in the summer for gifted students. The cram course for the, for the um, entrance exam for teachers. DJ starts in third grade. Google a, Washington, a Washingtonian article, you'll see a picture of these little eight-year-olds sitting in a classroom learning how to prep for the TJ exam. So these kids are set up for this kind of thing. So a regular kid who's an excellent student, loves math and science, but mom and dad don't know to put them in all these things or can't afford it, 
I found one prep session online last night, two months of prep, $1,000. You take it right before the exam in the fall. Not everybody has that money. Not everybody has the savvy. But these parents have communicated. I understand that the Embassy of Korea has a link to TJ admissions. I taught many kids who came here from India specifically to attend Carson and TJ. Specifically, the parents come here, however they come here, put the kids in Carson, pipeline to TJ. That's the way they look at it. People move right before seventh grade to get into Carson so that they can go to TJ. So I feel that there's a pipeline. There are parents who are buying their kids a seat at TJ. They're, not all children have this same opportunity, but they have the aptitude articulation that uh, very, Sorry. very helpful. We appreciate your help. Here. Are there those that are here to speak in opposition uh, to the bill? And if you could avoid clapping, it just helps it all move through. 73 bills is going to be a lot today. Welcome. You have some concerns about the bill? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, I'm Michael Malloy representing Fairfax County Public Schools. Um, we actually, we, we very much appreciate the senator's uh, uh, kind of focus on, on equity and, and, and access, and actually our new superintendent uh, who just uh, started a few months ago um, ag agrees, agrees with that being a priority. Uh, he's created a new position uh, in the school system, chief academic and equity officer, and the TJ admissions office is, is uh, constantly undergoing review in terms of its admissions policy. Uh, the reality is, is TJ is a, a very highly competitive, uh, it's a very highly competitive school. Um, only about 17% of all all applicants get into TJ. Uh, you've got an essay. You've got, you've got, uh, you've got assessments, and then you've got teacher recommendations. So it's a very highly competitive process to get in there. Um, you know, we welcome this discussion, but we don't think that this is the right venue for it. We think this should be this discussion should be held in, uh, in among our constituents, among our stakeholders, and uh, and. Uh, we hope you wouldn't support the bill. We're grateful for you coming today. Others are here that have concerns about the bill. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Jeremy Bennett with School Boards Association. Uh, we have concerns with the bill uh, regarding its limit of local control of the locally elected school board. Uh, and for that reason, uh, we feel that decisions in terms of enrollment should be made at that level. And for that reason, uh, we are opposed to the bill. Great. Senator Servo, we've got about a minute to yeah. wrap up and okay. we're all done. Easy. Um, first of all, Mr. Chairman, I would say to uh, Senator from Ch uh, Chesapeake, um, Senator Cosgrove, with regard to the facility, this school gets investment from the private sector that other schools in the county can only dream of. The other schools in the county just can't compete. All the corporations, they want to put all their money in so they can have all these fancy wind tunnels and laser labs and stuff that, that other children in the county have no access to and have, could never get because they just can't attract that kind of private sector capital and attention to their schools. And okay. so it's, it's a wonderful facility, but, but it's not fair because not everybody gets to use it. Um, with regard to meddling in the local school board, I, I totally appreciate that. The problem is this issue has been an issue. This has been an issue for 10 years, and the local school system hasn't dealt with it, and the school board won't deal with it, and it's because it's been 10 years of people complaining. I think it's time for us to step in because we're the ones that created governor's schools, and we need to step in and send them, or we need to maybe send them a message that we want to see something done about it, and we want to see this addressed, or that we will step in. So, And I, I, I'm, I'm sensitive to that. Well, Senator Serbell, uh, well done on your presentation. Uh, what is the pleasure of the committee? Mr. Chairman. Yes, <clears throat> Senator As Cosgrove. a 1972 graduate of Annandale High School. <laughs> hey, go Adams. Go Adams. <laughs> I moved to PBI. <laughs> There's a motion and a second to uh, PBI. All those uh, in favor of PBI will record their votes aye. Those opposed, no. Clerk, close the roll. Yes, 13 days one. Yes, 13 days one.